Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Welcome everybody to Painting Watercolours with me, Colin. Hope you enjoyed this one. This is a farm scene, some furrows, a little tiny pond there, trees, and I'm going to make this an autumn scene. Unrounded rounded the colours, we have cadmium yellow deep, naples yellow, raw sienna, light red, french ultramarine and burnt umber. And with that, I think we'll get started. I've stretched the paper, which is just brushed water on it both sides. So this is just some naples yellow. Fairly weak, almost like a stain in certain areas. Then I want to take some raw sienna. Brush this in towards the, the pond and also drop a little bit into the sky, but not much. It's just to change the colour, a bit of cloud. I'll take some French ultramarine, just check that for strength. Really weak. I'm just dropping this in. Giving it a wiggle. I can bring some down here to where the pond is, just allowing it to mingle, it doesn't really matter. Take some light red to that. Just to give it a slightly purpley reddish tinge. I'm going to drop some clouds in. Taking a little of the light red, just mixing this on the paper, and just allowing the light red to show through this side. There's a little bit in here, light red, just along the furrow lines. A bit more Naples yellow up here I think. A little bit of burnt umber, straight forward. Starting from the back edge, pulling it inwards so it's stronger at the bottom just to help with the illusion of distance and there is some background trees in here but it's a little wet at the moment so I'm going to give it a bit of time to dry off until it looks like velvet that you see on a snooker table or a billiard table and I'm going to let it dry naturally because I want it to dry evenly the paper will still be damp so I'm going to give this about 10 minutes. Now that that's dry, I've just put some raw sienna into the centre there. I'm taking a mop brush, I'm just dipping the tips in. And we can just check this for spread. Just begin to drop some trees into the background. Think about the shape that you want. I want it reasonably light around this area. Where that tree is. And I'm going to take some light red and add that into it, creating a sort of an earthy orange, very pale. I do want a little bit of darkness in it, so some burnt umber, just a hint of. French Ultramarine. Just take a bit, a bit of murk, just dropping this in areas. Just deciding where it would look right. Take some burnt umber once again, some French Ultramarine, a little of the light red, and some of the raw sienna. Just adding some structure to the back of these. Just that's a little more interesting to your background. Then I want to take my mop brush again. smaller one while the paper's still damp. I just want to add some extra onto the furrows. 
This will spread, it doesn't uh, matter, but it just creates a little bit, helps build your painting up a little bit more. We're going to let that dry. Now that's nice and dry. I'm just going to take some clean water along this back row here, bushes. I'm just going to drop some water in here just to dampen it slightly because I want to drop some colours into it. Raw sienna. Bit of burnt umber. Some light red. I also want to mix up a tiny bit of green. Take some cadmium yellow, some raw sienna, just to dull it. French ultramarine, it's a bright one, isn't it? Yeah. And then I'm going to put some burnt umber into that, just to take it down to that real earthy looking green. Just drop some of this in. I think we'll come across to the bushes here. It's the same thing. I want to take some of that green, the little mop brush. Maybe this is an evergreen tree at the back here. We're just going to put this in. Like I said to you, remember, think of the shape of the tree and the foliage, how you want it. Just use the tips of the brush. Maybe it is autumn, I'm going to drop a little yellow into this. Not much because I don't want it too strong. Ultramarine, just for a little darkness, just on the underside. And then we can add a little structure to these trees because you can see more because they are closer. And pull it into that damp paint. It's one or two darker spots. Isn't that a quick way to paint trees? French ultramarine, put it in there with some, I read the rest of it, and a little bit more. And some of the yellow, yeah, nice and dark. Once again, I'm taking a mop brush, breaking it open. bushes on the top of this, just the hinting of foliage. You can use an old filbert brush or an oil painting filbert brush if you want to. Just allowing this to get darker and run. Nice broken tops. off the brush. Also in this one it's a bit closer so I'm going to add a little bit of the murky green. Dropping in some of the yellow. Ultramarine to that, 
creates a little bit of dark underneath the bushes, just like a, a shadow. Pull one or two branches and twigs out. Just a little damp brush. I'm just going to attach this to the field just by touching it with some a damp brush that has some water on the tip. Pulling it into the field. Same with this one. Softening the edges in. I'll take a little light red and where the pond is I want to add this in. I want to make this quite light. This is just some water on the brush and I'm just pulling it about. Take some burnt umber and just around the edge of the pond I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a shoreline in. Once again a little bit more water. Just softening it in. Taking some of the green. I'm just going to put this into the tree here. This oak tree on there into that. I'm going to drop some of the light red. French ultramarine and burnt umber. Just give the branches a little wiggle. And then just before we Add any more to that, we're just going to let that dry. Now that's dried, I've just turned the board around so it's upside down. You might find it easier to put the branches in this way and I'm mixing up some French ultramarine and burnt umber. And I'm just going to take a small detail brush and you can start to put your branches in. giving them a wiggle as you go. I'm still having work carried out on the house. I'm actually in a, a friend's house at the moment to try and get something done. You can decide how many branches you really want on this. Then I want to turn it round. Again, just break it open, take some of the light red straight on the brush, take the excess off, and I'm just going to add some slight texture to this tree, just showing some of the autumn colour. Just using the tips of the brush. ultramarine into that. And just on the underneath of the light red just touch this in and this will help blend this in with the branches. I'll come back to my field I'm going to take some burnt umber straight forward. I think we'll start with this one. 
I can add the farmer's furrows in. Just leaving slight gaps between them. Start with the burnt umber first. Leaving slight gaps in between some of it. I'll just do two just to show you because this can take a little time. I'll take a damp brush, just soften some of this into the field. And see how you're creating a shape. Pulling it over that Naples yellow, sort of peeling it out towards the top end. putting a darker colour on top of this, leaving some of the other colour to show through. And you do that to each furrow. It's dry, I'm just going to take some more burnt umber and I'm going to add it to the French ultramarine and burnt umber here. I don't want it quite black but I want it quite dark, but still on the brown side, almost like a sepia colour, I think that will do it, and along this again, but only on the last, maybe third of this field, is at it, and I'm doing it in a arch, so you get the furrow shape. Just adds more depth draws your eye in. I'm working quickly because I'm going to have to soften this in as we go once again. So I'm leaving a gap some of it so you get the light and the dark just fools your eye just pull the top down a little bit that way okay maybe there's a couple of birds in the sky This is where you get to sign it, mount it and frame it. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, please click the like button and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.